Hi guys, welcome back to another GGF video. Now today we're gonna to be doing a quick overview video on AMD's latest 1950X Threadripper CPU. We'll be comparing this to a i9 Intel 7900X CPU and we'll be checking out the different results between multi-threaded tests and so on. Then in the second part of this video, I'll be using ASRock's X399 Gaming Professional motherboard to show you in a few simple steps how easy it is to overclock the 1950X to 4.1 gigahertz on all cores. But before we jump in, we'll have a quick word from our sponsor. With its unmatched processing power, the Red Ripper is the ultimate platform for PC enthusiasts. With the Red Ripper, ASRock brings you the perfect companion, the ASRock X399 Tai Chi motherboard, supporting four-way SLI and crossfire configurations, triple Ultra M.2 sockets, eight SATA 3 with U2 connector, gives you unlimited expansion possibilities. Featuring ASRock's iconic Tai Chi heatsink design, extra VRM cooling, IR digital PWM with 11 phase power for rock solid stability. All this with its competitive price makes it the perfect X399 solution. For more information, head to asrock.com. With the 1950X, you get 16 cores and 32 threads with a base clock of 3.4 gigahertz and a max turbo clock of four gigahertz. Now with the 7900X, you get 10 cores and 20 threads with a base clock of 3.3 gigahertz and a max turbo clock of 4.3 gigahertz. Pretty close numbers in terms of speed, but clearly when it comes to multi-thread benchmarks, the extra core count on the 1950X should help. The motherboards we'll be using are of course ASRock's Tai Chi boards in both X399 and X299 flavors. I've been using these boards for a bit recently and I find them the perfect balance between performance and affordability. Other specs include 64 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z RGB memory running at 3200 MHz, a Galaxy Hoff 1080 Ti video card, and NVMe SSD on both systems. I made sure all BIOS settings were at default and only changed the memory to reflect its rated speed. Let's jump in and take a look at the results. Okay, so now I wanna run through some basic overclocking steps on the 1950X to push it up to 4.1 gigahertz, which is definitely achievable. Uh, before we were running our tests, it was all at stock, and that means the CPU is gonna be running about at 3.6 gigahertz on all cores. Now, first thing I've done is I've thrown in some faster memory because I wanna see how fast I can go. Unfortunately, the fastest I have is uh, 3,600 uh, megahertz for the memory, so 3,600, and that is the Galax Hall of Fame. So let's have a look here. So we're at the BIOS here, the main screen, we can see everything's pretty much default, the memory's default, and the CPU is default. So we don't have to do much, we just have to go to this first step here. We can leave that the same. We can go down to uh, manual settings. So I'm gonna put in say 4100 there. Now I have done some little testing before. I'm not gonna go it on, uh, on the video here. You can keep on uh, incrementing your voltage or you can go a little bit higher than you think and work your way down. So I know that's around uh, one point uh, 362 is about where I go a little bit high, is about where I want to go for this. Now this will all depend on how well your cooling is, and you know with GGF we do have some pretty decent cooling, but most all-in-one coolers can achieve this uh, this result. Uh, definitely you want to change your XMP profile, uh, it's detected XMP profile one, it's got your uh, detected uh, speeds there. So what we'll do is we'll go down to, what we want is 3600 megahertz, and that's all we really want to do. So what I'll do is I'll save this, reboot now, and we'll jump into Windows. All right, now we're back in Windows. Let's just take a look at some of the uh, specs before we jump in and run our Cinebench score. We just wanna make sure everything is running uh, how we have it in our overclock settings. First off, I'll run CPU Z. Now if we have a look, we can see we're at 4097 megahertz, basically 4.1. And another thing we really wanna check is our memory. Memory can be tricky these days to get, it to, to get it to stick at the rated speed. So as you can see there, we're running at 1799, basically 1800 megahertz, times that by two, and that'll give you your 3600 megahertz for the memory. So that's spot on there. Another program I like to use is HW Info 64 or Hardware Info 64. I just like this because it shows you the uh, shows you the clocks of all the cores and how they are performing and what speeds they're running at. We saw before 
how uh, when it was a default mode, auto was kicked in and they're pretty much all over, over the place. I think normal operation with a 1950X, you normally have two cores firing at its 4.1 at around there and all the rest will run at about 3.6. Now let's throw it on Cinebench and we'll have a look. I'm not sure what kind of score this is going to get because I am running my uh, OBS screen recording software. So I'm not sure how much uh, load that puts on the, uh, the CPU, but you should be getting around uh, 3,500 with the 1950X at around 4.1. Now it doesn't take these, uh, long these days to run Cinebench with the uh, CPUs out. And that's 3424. So yeah, I just ran this before with the uh, OBS Studio, which is the recording software off, and I did get 3,500 and uh, 25 so it takes about 100 off due to the uh, the recording software but yeah not bad at all with those results Alrighty, that's pretty much it for this video uh, as you can see the 1950x certainly is a beast but you probably already knew that i am a little bit late uh, to the party when doing the comparison video but it really comes down to what workloads you'll be using for your cpu uh, for the amd threadripper certainly when it comes to multitask multi-thread application it certainly definitely is a winner uh, they are prices uh, roughly the same the 1950x and the 7900x so that also makes it a harder choice between the two but definitely uh, work out what type of tasks you'll be doing and you can go from there now in the second part of the video i uh, doing the overclocking to the 4.1 gigahertz it may have looked easy in the video but i have checked out a lot of other videos using a lot of different boards and reaching the 4.1 gigahertz isn't really that easy i was actually able to achieve that on both of these boards the tai chi and the professional gaming and it was just in those few simple steps even getting the memory up to 3600 megahertz was no issue at all but yeah that's pretty much it on this quick overview i want to thank amd and azrock for supporting this video and i want to thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for next time